You thought Jaffa Goldblum was gone forever? You were wrong. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another episode of Rapidly Aging Technology. Yes, it's been a while um, and a lot of things have changed and happened. If you are familiar with my videos of the past, you're going to start getting uh, an inclination that, that things are a bit different and, and you would be correct. Things are a lot different. Uh, where we're filming, um, all sorts of things and a lot of things in my personal life. but. Uh, Let's see if we can get back into things. Today, we are going to be looking at one aspect of cassettes, which is recording using you know modern cassettes that you can find on a, a, a decent but two-head cassette deck. I find that most videos um, and, and instructions talking about recording on cassette decks usually focus on three-head decks. And there's a good reason in that three decks are head decks are the best uh, for recording for a, a few reasons. One is that they have instead of having a record uh, an erase head and a combo record playback head, they have a race record and playback as three separate heads, making each one specialized so it can do a little bit of a better job. But I've also found that most of them, if the manufacturer is going to go through the effort of making a three head deck, they're also going to give it control over a lot more aspects of recording. Uh, the, the bias can be adjusted. These things, so you can hone in your recording to, um, to match your tape. The bias, and this is going to be a horrible explanation for it, basically you're, you're matching, um, oh, what's a good way to put it? Basically, it's, it's, it's a signal used to effectively prepare or, or uh, work with the magnetic tape so that the audible signal gets transferred better to it as opposed to being buried under noise and, and nonsense. I would look it up. It's much more in-depth than that. But each tape formula, in this case this is Capture, which is a Type 1 cassette, they're all a little different from each other. Now some of them would, would focus try to be similar enough so that they'd work on general decks, but um, some of them don't quite fit the mold. This one does not fit the mold that this tap, tape deck was uh, originally set up for. This is a Hitachi DE57. Um, and it was set up with a different formula of Type 1 tape for its uh, Type 1 recording. And so when there's deviations from that, the results turn out a little different. So we're going to explore that today. Um, and we're going to use Capture because this one, we might look at um, uh, the Fox, um, RTM the Fox um, as well, but this one is quite a bit different and we're going to show what that looks like. So as far as recording setup goes, this of course is the cassette deck we're using. This is the tape we're going to be using. The sound will be coming th from my computer passing through a Sound Blaster ZXR, um, going through this Yakin SD-CD3, which is using some new old stock vacuum tubes. These are Sylvania um, uh, to, to, to do 6SN7s, uh, and they are, I think they're called like tall boys, so they have a lot of um, chrome on top. This is the box they came in. Uh, let's see if I can focus there. So Sylvania there, and it's a well 6S, 6SN7 GTB, and a bunch of measurements that I'm going to be perfectly honest, I don't um, know all the details on, but they came with it from the previous owner. Um, I also have the stock tubes in there, which uh, these do sound better. Now the stock tubes tended to add. Um, more bass came through on them. It was kind of um, fuzzy, if that makes sense. Not 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 staticky, but it was it was very warm. Um, not as detailed. These seem more neutral. They're not as bassy. They're not as tubey. Um, 
but they do add a little bit of flavor. So it's passing through that through these switch uh, boxes into that. And then we'll also look at maybe my um, hi-fi system and what we're going to play it back on. So without further ado, let's um, pick let's pick a song and um, we'll go from there. So I think a song that will work for us today because it is it's lively, it has a lot of bass to it, um, and it just has a lot of stuff going on. Uh, will be The Wage Cage, alternative cover by Carl Batts. Uh, I think this is based off of a, uh, maybe a 4chan thread um, that was mocking the um, cage design that Amazon came out with um, as a theoretical idea for their um, warehouse workers. They say it was, you know, to, to give them something to keep them protected, move around, but quickly jokes um, were made about it being a cage. Uh, the cage for your employees and so there's a someone wrote about it making a satirical a poem you could say and this person um, put it to music um, hopefully it doesn't get copyright struck it's, it's kind of a smaller creator um, and we're not going to be listening to the whole thing uh, we're just using it as a demonstrative uh, song here so let's get the camera set up uh, in front of the cassette deck on a tripod and we'll go over kind of what recording on it looks like and then we'll kind of get to the issue you may have with a fixed bias two-head deck when you go to record. It's not a problem that's insurmountable but it's something you're gonna have to play with. And that's what this video is for. All right so we are at the cassette deck we're going to hit the eject button it just pops open put in our capture cassette uh, these are are available for I think it was like about thirty five dollars for a box I think when I got them. Um, a brief review of the tape: they're not perfect. I mean, they sound fine. I don't really have a problem with the sound, but they are. Um, the tape is not cut perfectly, and I found that in in cassette decks that are don't have the finest tape handling, they can actually get overwound and get tight, and then bogged down, and then you have to run them back and forth a few times. While say. RTM the Fox, which looks like this, does not. I can put this in any cassette deck and it just flows perfectly. I haven't had any issues with these guys. Um, so between the two, I'd lean towards this, but this has gotten more expensive recently with all the supply chain nonsense. Anyway, we're going to stay out of that. So we have it in. Over onto this side, we'll talk about the deck a little bit. Basically, it wants to know if you have it set with a power on and it's on a timer, so if the timer kicks on and gets power, should it just stay off? Should it play or should it record? We're not using a timer, we don't need to care about that. We have a lot of controls. We have the counter reset, which just resets the digital counter. Uh, you can, you can uh, try to save things in a, a program, which I haven't actually tried. Um, it's not really something I, I care for. Uh, scan a play, you can have this thing basically fast forward with the head head a little below the tape, still touching it though, listening for a, a pause so that it will, so you can skip through to the next song. You also have what type of tape you're playing and recording to, normal, type two, and metal. Uh, Dolby, on or off, so on, and then in here is type C. So I got type B and C. B is more universal, C does a better job, but A, your machine has to have Dolby Type-C on it. And from what I've read online, Dolby maybe, maybe wasn't as strict on their um, specifications for C when it was implemented. So um, sometimes they'll have two Dolby C cassette decks and they're not, they don't seem to be aligned with each other as well. Um, but if you're doing it on the same deck or, or decks that you know that'll work fine with, C should be better. MPX filter, if you're recording off of the radio, takes away that 19 um, kilohertz carrier signal out of the path. We don't need to worry about that. And then if your input is coming from uh, mic or line, and we are going to be line level on the back. Now below output, so this um, doesn't, so when it produces volume out, it's out the back, it actually is variable, so you can match it to the rest of your equipment. Um, I found that just over on max seems to be actually where it should be. Um, I guess you could say like dual mono mic um, connectors. 
and together our stereo, headphone out, the recording volume dial, which if you look at it is actually split. So the, and looking at the diagram, the center is left, the outside is right. And this, they're, you notice they're not perfectly aligned. I found that seems to match reality a little more. Then you have uh, rewind, play, fast forward, stop, record functions, um, record and pause, you can hit together and just gets into record mode, which is handy. Uh, put a mute between things. You can also set up that once you get to the end of a tape, do you want it to um, rewind, automatically rewind and stop, so go back to the front, or automatic rewind and then start playing again, so one side on a perpetual loop. Let's get into the recording process on this deck. Okay, so we have the track queued up um, on my machine. Oh, I guess I should talk about why I use my computer. So I have, you know, up, up above here, we have a reel-to-reel -reel player. Down below, we have an eight track. It's also a recorder. The eight track is a recorder and reel-to-reel -reel recorder. And then over there, I have my um, uh, record player. I can funnel basically any source I want into my computer, record it directly, um, manipulate in Audacity, get like sound levels um, balanced so each track is about the same, and, and, and then uh, piece things together to make a one super track. You could say they could be one side of a cassette. I find that pretty convenient. It gives me some uh, flexibility on recording. But with this setup, it's also capable of listening to more than a, a source and, and recording directly to the cassette deck. You can do whatever you want. Um, with cassette decks and with, with computers and all the things we have now, you have a lot of flexibility on how you want to make your mixtapes. But on this deck, let's get into record mode. So we're going to do record and pause together. Okay, you notice that those light up and that the uh, play lights up and the tape is not moving. This is working as intended. If we hit play, it's now recording, but I haven't played the song yet, so it's just recording nothing. So it'll be, right now, it'll basically be just erasing the tape as we go. And once we get in a little bit, we can use this counter to follow. Uh, we can start the uh, process. So we'll get, get back over here. And I'm going to start way down. I'm going to start the song up just somewhere in the middle. Okay, we have sound. Now, good rule of thumb is to turn it up until you get your peaks kind of at zero, right? For the most part, zero plus one, probably fine for, for type one tape. And we just gotta keep track of our, of our source there. So this looks to be about the right level we wanna record on. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna back the track up because I think it gets quiet not too long after this. We wanna, we wanna keep it at this level. We'll hit play and it will actually start recording it. So let's back up and play. We are now recording because as you can see that is flashing. And so these are lighting up and it's fun stuff. Not a whole lot to look at. You can see with the light coming through that that's recording. And we are not using any uh, noise reduction in this circumstance. Um, if you are using noise reduction, um, I think it become, tr the traditional advice is it becomes a little more important to keep it around, you know, zero about where we're keeping it. Um, just to keep it from, I think it's Dolby B is a little, you can overdrive it. Dolby C is apparently more durable. Anyway, that's, people with more expertise and better explaining those things can do. Okay, we got to a quiet part of the song. Let's stop. We could either do pause, keep it in record mode, or we can just completely stop out. Okay. So now we're going to back up to where the music started, and I'll figure that. And then we're going to going to look at some things. All right, I've rewound the tape and then played it forward until we got to where I actually started recording and reset the timer to zero. This gives us our true start point of comparison when we're recording. Now, you recall where the peaks were. We were recording it to hit up to zero, which is, you know, right. So we should expect that if this cassette deck is aligned properly with this particular tape formula, well, on playback, it'd be pretty much around that same area. You know, plus or minus maybe a little bit. So let's start playing. You'll also hear faintly the music in the background, but listening to it isn't the key. 
at least not out here. All right. You notice what's going on here? We are way down. Now, if this was a three head deck in your alignment process, uh, you would had adjusted, you would have solved this problem beforehand. So what do you do on a two head deck? Do you live with this level of recording? Or do you try something else? I'm going to try something else. The sound, which you're listening through a microphone, you're listening through um, the recording, the YouTube processing, it's, you're not getting the, the full picture of it. Um, sounds good. So will it sound good if we crank this thing up? So we're going to stop this. We're going to back it on up, get to about zero. We'll stop there and we'll try again because I want to be over the same area of tape for the most part. Yeah, close enough. And record pause. So, you're about five, so let's see. Now this, we're just using this, the, uh, these scales, I don't know how safe it is to really just, you know, count things up or down, but I think we're hitting about five, right? So one, two, three, four. So we've added about four onto it. Let's see how far we would move. So we were hitting zero. So we want to record at one, two, three, five. Let's have our peaks around five and see what happens. Okay, it's in record mode. We're gonna turn the music back on again. The farty sound is actually my chair, in case you heard that. So let's bump this thing up until, okay, we're hitting about three. Okay, we're just touching five. Maybe a bit more, okay. So we've got the dial going up there. This is about, we were about what, at two and a half or so. We're now at about maybe four and a half and that's where we're getting on there. So let's go through and uh, actually record this. So I'm gonna back the track up and then let it rip. All right, we have recorded, um, I don't know, 20 seconds worth of music onto here at the higher levels. Let's play it back and see where we're hitting. And we're just, we've gone just a touch past zero, that's why it's 99. Well, certainly we recorded something. There we go. So notice now, we're actually starting to hit, hit about where we were recording the um, left channel I mean, it is a stereo track, so things aren't going to be perfectly the same. It's not mono. That is getting our overall peaks about where we want them. And you could probably try pushing it higher. So let's stop the music briefly here. So what I've just demonstrated is it's not a perfect fix, right? You're still pushing more level into the tape. Right, just trying to shove it in there. This could result in more distortion. It could make the sound less pleasing. Maybe if it's not a very good deck, maybe that would be overburdening its, its record head um, to where it's distorting. Maybe the tape can handle it, but maybe it, it, it can't. But with a two head deck with, with just fixed bias, it's just, it is the way it is. Unless you want to align this thing, like crack it open and adjust it for a specific tape you're using, you're going to want to really play back and listen to your recordings before you determine them done and figure out how your tape and your deck work together. Um, let's let's um, do a comparison here real quick because, okay, we've, we've played around with this tape. So on this tape, we can reasonably say that this is, you know, if it sounds all right, we're probably more going to be recording here. Well, what happens? If we record, if we do the same thing on the Fox, let's get it set up and we'll come back with the uh, results of recording at the same level. All right, so we are back. Uh, so now we're gonna listen to the, or play back the Fox tape, which we just recorded on here using about the same level 
Um, at the beginning, it flares up and then settles back down because I in inadvertently just grabbed this and turned it. I needed it to go back. So we'll see it settle back down. So that's a misnomer, and now we're where we should be. So we're, you notice it's a bit higher overall than the capture tape. The peaks are like they're hitting up to the same points, more or less, but it's more consistently getting there. What that tells me, and even it's even going further, what that tells me is that this deck, the formula that it was uh, aligned to, is a lot closer to the Fox tape than it is to the capture tape. All right, so what have we learned about this? It's you need to experiment, um, especially with, with a deck that you can't adjust without cracking it open and, and doing it with, with a rice series of pots and um, probably having a manual knowing exactly like what you're doing and what you need to touch. Um, you're going to have to try to find ways to get the volume levels you want. And on top of that, be prepared that it may affect the sound quality if you push it too hard, either because of the machine's not happy doing it or the tape isn't happy taking those kind of levels. Um, these are all things to, to, to balance out. But I think cassettes are a, uh, a fun medium to, to work with. I mean, they are relatively small. Um, it's a tangible thing. Tape does kind of add to the flavor, if you, if you want, of, of the music a little bit, because it's, Im it's an imperfect um, analog copy, so that the, the tape imparts some, uh, some differences into it. And, and, and often I find that, that pleasing. It's, it's a difference. It's something, it's a different taste, you'd say. To finish out this video, um, and I will have the link to the song in the description so you can actually go to that creator. I think he has a SoundCloud. I think you can like download it if you like. Um, I actually enjoyed the song. It's not my genre. Um, if you haven't figured it out, my genre is usually classical stuff, 1920s hot jazz, a lot of old man things. Um, this I enjoy. Uh, but we're going to finish out. I'm going to finish recording this on capture. Um, at this higher level. We're going to play back on another deck on my main um, hi-fi system. And we're just going to um, see how it turns out. I might tweak it to a little higher to maybe push those peaks just a bit more. So I might record up to maybe up to seven. I'll see how that goes. And then we'll just, we'll just play it back. And we'll see if it sounds good on a, on a better system. Because right now, the music you've heard in the background it's my computer speakers, right? This is just my, this is just the, where the computer's at. Um, it might not reveal a whole lot of, you know, if there's imperfections there, they might kind of get masked, they might get masked over. So we're going to go um, into the other room. And then you're going to see the hi-fi system, which will probably become the, um, uh, the focus of later videos. Anyway, we'll meet you in there. Welcome to where the hi-fi is set up. So down here we have the uh, TAC W1200, which is a current production deck. It really isn't that bad. There are some quirks with it. Um, it's not up to the standard of old decks as far as features or whatnot, but it, it is there. If you want something newly made, it's probably one of the, be the best ones you can actually get now. Um, and I defer to other reviews on it. I have turned off its dynamic noise reduction, so we will get full tape hiss if there's any. Um, it is below an old, um, it's technically uh, a stereo receiver, but I'm using it as a tuner, and I turned it on so you can just see its glow. And the audio from the cassette deck is going over and passing through a Yamaha uh, uh, AS801, and then going through a couple of Numi uh, BS5s. So that's the sound system. So we're going to turn it on. Uh, I'll, I'll kick it over to where it actually starts playing. We can see the VU meters there. And we're, we're also using the, if you notice the sound difference, we're using the camera's built-in mics because they're forward firing. And so you can hear the um, speakers. So uh, I'm sure I'll talk about these components at some point. All right, here we go. I've moved it up to where the music right about starts and using the remote for the cassette deck. 
on well two. Here we go. So I'm not sure how well you caught that on video, but the, the little VU meters um, on this deck pretty much just peaked it at zero. And that's another thing, um, cassette decks don't always use the same scale. So a zero on this deck might not be a zero on the other deck. So the other one it was uh, peaking past zero, this one puts it there. This one also might not just be coarser. Without as because it's smaller, right? There's not room to show this show the variation. So zero might be actually a range on this deck, and I have found that zero on here is pretty hot. So whenever I record tapes on this guy, and it could be a weakness of its own, you know, heads which are not the best. Going much past zero, it really does start to degrade things. Um, it depends. It really depends on on the type of music you're doing. Um, with type one cassettes, at least bass notes seem to be absorbed, you could say our recorder absorbed better and so they can overpower the other notes, so I guess something to keep in mind, but I don't know if it came through very well, but actually it recorded really pretty good all things considered, being just a course, you know, trying to match the volume we want without really tweaking other things, so that's my video um, it, you, know, you can make good um, and loud recordings with a two-head deck. It just you're going to have to probably crank things up a little bit, um, match, you know, play things back and see where the volume levels are hitting. But also, you're gonna have to listen because um, this came out incredibly distorted, and you might have. Uh, I mean, it's hard to tell through the microphone, but uh, if you would have caught something that, oh, it's tw the sound is being twisted in a certain way, maybe you need to dial it back and just not have as loud a recording. But anyway, I hope you just enjoyed that. You know, I hope to do more, and I'm, I'm glad to, to be here again with you folks. Um, many of you have been quite loyal and asking for me to come back, and um, I'm going to do my best to try. I mean, uh, in, in a sense, I have more free time. Um, it's just a matter of, you know, being motivated. Also, having a... Uh, subwoofer in an apartment is a bad idea unless you turn it way down so that it just gives you a little taste but here we go uh, we are back more or less maybe we'll find out anyway hope you have a great day and we will see you next time